Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and today I want to sit down and kind of work you guys through how I use the iPad in the cockpit. The reason this topic even came up is from our documentary that's coming out, Flying Again, which maybe you guys have seen the trailer and the video on Kickstarter. If you haven't, there's a link underneath this video. I highly encourage you guys to go check out that Kickstarter uh, uh, donation area uh, and, and make a pledge to get some really great rewards. Check out the trailer for Flying Again. We're taking rusty pilots and working to get them proficient again. The number one question those rusty pilots have are, Jason, great, I'm working through the groundwork, I'm with an instructor, I'm back to flying, but how do I incorporate all this technology into flying now? A lot of these rusty pilots have gone out, already bought an iPad, they have their ForeFlight, their FlyQ, their WingX app, they've got the ADS-B receiver, and now what? Well, I want to show you that. Uh, so right now we're inside of the FlyQ app by Seattle Avionics. Again, um, I don't care which app you choose. Um, ForeFlight, FlyQ, WingX, Garden Pod, doesn't matter. What I care about is that you pick an app and that you stick with it. That's what's super important. We happen to be using FlyQ right now. It's a favorite of mine. Uh, I actually paid for my FlyQ app. This wasn't given or anything like that. There's no, uh, no pitch for that. Uh, I just want to show you how to use an iPad in the cockpit. So we're landing on our screen right here, and where I usually start is let's make a flight plan. So top left corner, I'm clicking, and let's type, and let's go from the Ocala Airport, and let's go up to the Craig Airport in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm pressing search. Now, guys, I might be two weeks out from my flight. This is where I actually start my flight planning. I want to look at my route. I'm right now on my Navlog page. Guys, remember back when you had to do the, uh, uh, your Navlog you know, by pencil? You know, paper and pen to do our nav log. Well, it makes it a little bit easier for us now. We've got our nav log out there. This can all be air print and everything else. We can get into that later. I'm clicking on the far right side, FAA flight plan. If I was to call my briefer and I wanted to read out my flight plan, or maybe I want to file electronically. If I'm connected with a Duots account, I can do that. Let's get to really the neat stuff now. Bottom center of the screen, you see an, uh, an icon that says Maps. That's where I'm tapping and the map comes up. Now I'm going to show you something really cool. In the top right corner I'm dragging down to where it says simulator and I'm starting that simulator. Guys we are now flying this fictitious flight. The FlyQ app is going to populate in the bottom left just like or, or the from bottom left to right like you can see our altitude's climbing we're steady in a nice climb on our airspeed we've got our track we're heading to Craig it's 78 miles we can see all this sort of stuff. We are on this fictitious flight, and this is how I want you to learn the apps. Again, I don't care which app you use, but what I want you to do is sit down on your big comfy couch like we're doing now, make a flight, put it into simulator mode, and then fly that flight. And let's play around with the app from there. So let's look at this flight. Everything's looking great. I'm following our route right now. I've got some great lakes right here uh, off to my left, some checkpoints. I've got some MOAs and some restricted airspace off to my right. Uh, nothing to be too concerned about, but I certainly want to know it's there. This is great so far. I'm continuing on. I'm loving this route. Then all of a sudden, we run into this issue right here. Guys, what's that? That's restricted airspace. Now, I've got two options. Is that airspace hot or cold? I need to figure that out. I can call Jacksonville Approach and request, you know, or ask, hey, is 2903 Delta hot or cold? What if they come back and say, 7159 Quebec, I'm sorry, that airspace is hot you're going to need to deviate around that airspace. Well, previously, how do we do that? I had the sectional chart all strewn out across the cockpit. I had my plotter out trying to figure out what heading is going to keep me around that airspace. Now, with the iPad, I can simply just tap on my route, drag my route on over, and create a waypoint. And guys, now I'm going around that. Look at this. Now it's a 041 heading for that. Uh, everything has made an adjustment. I'm taking a look at my new route and I can see all that now. I'm also making sure I didn't cut it too tight to this mo and this restricted airspace. Everything looks good. I've got my new heading and my new route around that restricted airspace. Guys, the iPad can be such a great tool when you use it as a tool like that. When you use it as your secondary tool, the iPad should never be your primary means of navigation. 
the iPad is always secondary. I still keep paper with me in the airplane, paper charts, paper approach plates. Sometimes, usually I have two iPads in the cockpit. It's important to have redundancies because there is no room for error in aviation. I want you to understand that. When you look at the iPad as a tool to increase situational awareness, a tool that you need to sit down and master ahead of time, it's going to help you a whole lot. Your single pilot resource management, your crew resource management, because the iPad literally becomes part of your crew, it's going to help you so much in the situational awareness department. But I encourage you guys to master this thing. I know a lot of you can be already asking, you know, Jason, can I take an iPad with me on the check ride? Can I take it with me on the BFR? Absolutely. However, understand you could and probably will be asked to fully demonstrate that iPad to all its capabilities. Here's my two requests. The first is don't let the iPad become a distraction. If you find you've got more head down time than VFR looking out of the cockpit time, the iPad is a distraction to you. And the second thing is the iPad is a secondary means of navigation. It should never be your primary means of navigation. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Any iPad related questions you guys have, scroll down underneath this video, leave me a comment on m0a.com. You know you'll get a response from me, one of our great team members here at m0a.com. Also guys, I highly encourage and recommend and wish that you'll check out our Kickstarter. That link is also underneath this video for you guys to check out. Make a pledge, you get some great rewards. Uh, like a three-year membership to our number one rated online ground school, DVD copies, and even flights with me. Uh, you can get all that by making a pledge on our Kickstarter, and that link is underneath this video. So, guys, thanks so much for all you guys do. I can't wait to read your comments. Can't wait to see your pledges come in on Kickstarter. Enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See you.